Hello everyone. I want to jump in and do a few things in this video, okay? <laughs> uh, it's probably going to be a little too much, but uh, I'm going to go with it. So I originally started wanted to make this video as a VR to the spring tarot to be read by Candy. And, you know, show off some decks that I've been using. Um, but I recently watched Marlena... Uh, Marlena's video, which I will leave below, about reality versus fantasy reading. And I loved it so much. She even used my deck, which honestly made me cry. <laughs> I love seeing it in action. Uh, so I wanted to get on and kind of uh, do that as like a beginning reading to this because spring always makes me think of fantasy and it makes me want to be imaginative with flowers and gardens and you know I uh, take a lot of astral trips in the spring because here where I'm living you can't necessarily I mean you can go outside but the pollen makes everything yellow and it messes with your sinuses so you know to save yourself the grief you kind of stay indoors <laughs> so um so I thought that just as a beginning reading to the spring TTBR I would show off, this is my trimmed uh, thoth right here. I would show off the reality versus fantasy that I have coming to me this spring as kind of a unasked for response to Marlena's video that I just watched last night. And I just loved the concept so much because I have, I have a problem with that, you guys. I do. I have a problem with staying in my own head and living the live in the fantasy or wanting to live the fantasy in my own head instead of reality um i mean i would much rather be in on my in my astral castle than doing the laundry you know but sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta put your feet to the ground you know so so we're gonna do that first I'll just pull that card <laughs> of course i had to get defeat <laughs> oh it's like the spring is gonna defeat me you guys uh, but anyway, so I just, that's funny. It's funny. Okay. So now I'm going to shuffle my wild essence thought here and see what we get. So basically what Marlena was saying in that video is she used several decks. Um, I mean, she started with the thought and my thought and my thought has nature, uh, pictures stock image pictures be to get to the essence or maybe even the core of what the thought is trying to convey. And so it does very much look like reality when this kind of, you know, abstract expressionist type, type art seems more fantasy, right? And a couple of her deck pairings were so on point with looking like reality versus fantasy. So anyways, I'm going to shuffle this and see what we get in the fantasy section as the defeat is more no I'm sorry the reality as the defeat would be like the fantasy so I'm living in the defeat I'm living in this dual nature here see like the dual nature I, I kind of see this card as a dual nature even though it's a five it's more about like the the like a four like this would be two and this would be two in the green and then the purple and it's like a versus Kind of like the card we see before this, uh, truce. Defeat would actually be, you know, something else coming in and plaguing said truce. So it's like another form of, we're, we're, we're we were trying so hard to be stable, but something else is going to come in and mess that up. So as the four of swords here, I kind of, I'm kind of feeling that that dual nature between the reality and fantasy just in this one card. But let's see what the Wild Essence Thoth gives us. Okay. Let me just pull a card. Oh, I love this card so much. This is the Nine of Wands, Strength. And the Nine of Wands always makes me think of equilibrium. It makes me think of riding a bike. I've made a video actually about this card. <laughs> uh, riding a bike and staying stabilized and using your core, using what you know to gain the momentum that you need. And so basically what this is saying is that I, I can keep getting defeated. I can keep falling off the bike. I can keep 
thinking that I'm gonna fall off the bike and that's preventing me and that's like I'm allowing procrastination but then I need to have that core strength to be able to keep the equilibrium where it needs to be for the momentum to stay uh, present so I really like that so basically keep my feet on the pedals not the ground like I'm not riding a bike with my feet on the ground I have to put my feet on the pedals and I have to be moving those pedals or the bike's gonna fall down uh, so, I really like that. That that went well. That went well for like a little personal reading today, you know? So, uh, I also want to disclose that when I share certain, when I share decks that I'm using, I don't necessarily mean that I've been, that I read them, you know? Like, I don't necessarily pull them out and put spreads down or just, you know, pull cards uh, in, a, in a reading in a tarot reading sense, most of the time, these are the decks that I want to look at. I want to play with, you know, I want to do, I want to have some fun with, right? And it's not necessarily all serious, you know? So when I say I'm using these decks, it really means in a whole plethora of ways. So these are the decks that I've been using in my sacred, uh, sacred, secret garden work. As I said, the the spring always makes me think of the secret garden. And it's kind of a response to Sorsha's video that she made about the secret garden movie and the, you know, the love she had for that. And I really started thinking about the secret garden and, and, and all the ways I use that uh, archetype, really, the archetype of the garden. And I love it so much, especially in the spring, that I try to get some, like, pear and, and uh, get a whole bunch of decks out and go at pulling cards not necessarily for a reading for like my real life or whatever but to build the secret secret garden to walk through the secret garden and kind of find out what my garden is trying to tell me and again not in a very serious way but uh, i love i love my ability to be able to like pull the cards and kind of step back from the reading and not say oh this is for my real life this is my garden you know, this is my garden's reading. Like if my garden were doing a tarot reading. So the first deck uh, over here is the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. I love this tarot so, so much. Um, there's just something about this deck that makes me want to read fairy tales. And it makes me want to, I don't know, just be plugged out and into my inner child and and there's a lot of play in this deck there's a lot but some of the cards are very real and honest and I appreciate that about a deck that can pull the imagination out of you while also being a heavy hitter when it needs to be and I like that about this deck so <laughs> I love this card it's my Hagrid card <laughs> It's like doing everything you can to birth that dragon, which are also sacred symbols <laughs> to me. And then the next one is the Tarot of a Moon Garden. Love this deck. And you know, to think about it, I, I love the stereotype of the fairy tale, which is basically what this is. This is more children's story fairy tale children's book right and this is kind of like the fairy tale in a stereotype uh very princess fairy you know 90s unicorns i don't know and so i just love it for what it is so i got that out recently and i've been wanting to uh play with this in terms of my secret garden and it's been really, it's been really good. It's been a long time since I've gotten it out and kind of played with it. And sometimes I, I like to do that with tarot. I like to, oh, we got a jumper, y'all. I love this card. <laughs> this is the Wheel of Fortune, but it's a carousel. How freaking perfect. Mm. <laughs> uh, now the last one is actually the Greenwood Tarot, but years ago... The artist of this deck put her images on um, online for you to download for free. 
and left some spaces at the top and the bottom of some cards for the titles for you to write the titles in yourself but they were white and it really took away from the art I thought they wasn't it wasn't as good as you know like if you were to have bought Greenwood Tarot back in the day uh, I do believe these are the same images for the Celtic Shaman pack if I'm not mistaken I think they're the same deck they just have different names but what I did was I ended up using the images that Jessica Potter put out, but trimming trimming them once they were all printed. And uh, it works out. It's like a little, I don't know. I, I haven't really known what the titles, like what cards are what, uh, just because I don't really care. You know, like this could be the Two of Pentacles, but it could also be Justice. Like, But there's arrows, so that's probably the Two of Arrows. So... But it just looks like all of them, right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but mostly I look at this like an oracle, you know? Like, of course, this looks like the full, right? Or I think it is full. But I look at it I look at it very much like kind of back from the tarot. Trying hard not to use the, the archetypes of the tarot because I've turned this into an oracle, right? Like, this, this is my art card. It's just because I can recognize that that would be temperance, right? Or maybe this is the justice card. I, again, I don't, I don't know. Or that could be the lovers, I guess. Because that looks like, I don't know, an egg and a flower. It's very pixelated. Very grainy. I love that. Mm -hmm. Donkey. The star. With the world that's very beautiful I love I love these images it's very Celtic to me and it's very uh, there's some kind of primal nature to this deck and to the art it, it just really makes me go far away back in time with um, with this art I backed this myself with a Cezanne painting uh, so it, it just matches so well and I love it. So I've kind of been getting this out, not necessarily again as clarifiers cause there's, it's not really how I use Oracle. Not, not really. I mostly just for the art, pull them out. Like, like here we have these two cards and I would just like go like something like this, you know, like around and just have the art kind of framing the tarot reading. If that's what I was going to go with it. Or even something like this where we're kind of seeing a, a, something play out. Like in, in, in a story. You know, like the ground is on fire. But we've realized that it's a bonfire going on. I think this is like the Four of Wands. That looks like the Four of Wands to me. Uh, so this is like a seasonal ritual, seasonal ceremony. And then we've got someone that's having an arrow. But that makes me think that someone that this could be like a ceremony of life, like a memorial. And this person is the one that's gonna put their arrow in the fire and make the boat, like, you know, hit the boat that's in the water and if the boat like catches on fire. Um, and then this very wintry, this always reminds me of the Kitliak. And so this is like a, kind of like you're, they're saying, the spirit made it. The spirit made it to the to the afterlife. And this is kind of like you get a little bit of a sheen of a spirit when this happens at the memorial. And the Kaliak like manifest in spirit form, like in a apparition. And basically just to let you know that the spirit has trans transitioned. Um anyway, see like that's kind of where I went with that. But that's kind of how I use this this little oracle. So pretty. Anyway, so and um, we're not gonna let, let's have another penisless card there. <laughs> so, so we got Forest of Enchantment, Tarot of a Moon Garden, and the Greenwood Tarot or the Greenwood Rock, what I call the Greenwood Oracle. 
And I'm kind of playing around in those decks as like my sacred garden. But then along those same lines, I have an oracle that I do actually use for the keywords and things. And that is my secret garden tree whisper oracle by Mags Black. Uh, her tree whisper oracle, the original, which is like an autumn winter one. They're very blues and grays and pinks, you know, bare bark. She made another one that's the Secret Garden, which is very much a spring summer. I mean, I love the foliage in this one. There's there, it's very more, it's more moist, it's more mossy, it's more floral. Where the other one is very bare, and you feel a coldness, a good coldness. You know, like you can see the your breath when you work with that deck. But this very much wants to. I don't know. I, I really want my hands in the soil, like in the soil when I work with this deck. And it's, it's very good. I, I love the manipulation in the photos because <clears throat> I can see the faces and I want to talk to the tree spirits and the other spirits that may be present, you know, like when I see flowers like this and it's a very secret garden-esque deck, I very much think of you know, um, fairies, I, I think of the fae realm and they're, that they're all kind of hidden. They're kind of hidden down here and you can't see. So I love, she put the door here in the deck. I love, I love that. So I'm just going to have that right there. Um, so I've been using this because the tree whispers are some of my favorite oracles. But as it's the time frame, I'm using this one. Actually, if we want to disclose, it's probably my favorite of the two. Only for the lushness. But I can't... I, I, I feel kind of... It feels kind of sacrilegious to say that. Because I love both of them so much. So. So I'm, I have been using the Tree Whispers. Synchronicity. And Potential. I love the ivy here. That's so pretty. But then, on top of, like I said, this this really has a theme. It's like a secret garden theme, you know? Which I didn't realize all of them would have that, but they, they do. And the, the next tarot that I've been using is the Tarot of the She. Which, you guys, you guys, I love this deck. This is like the same card stock as the Voyager Tarot. So it's kind of rough on my hands when I shuffle. Because, you know, it's, it's she thick. She thick. But I love it. And I can't trim it. For some reason, I feel like these black borders are the frames. It's like if I cut the borders off, the Fae are just going to like get out of the cards and fly around. It's kind of like, kind of like they're holding them there. They're holding them in the card. <laughs> If that makes any sense. Uh, so. Look at that tower. Oh. I love the mask. There's the mask and the mask is just like. <sighs> broken off. Lots of dragons. Lots of fey energy. Lots of. Um, what I would call Lady of the Lake vibes. Where you have this. This stream. These streams of water. And these like little creeks. And. Those areas of the earth really, really make me think of the Fae, the creek beds, those little places where it's, it's wet and you find those very nice soft rock, river rock. <clears throat> and that's like mostly like when I go camping, I camp in places like that with like next to a creek. I love this. There's something so, again, primal about this deck that I love, but primal in a, I don't know, primal in a, in a, I guess in a Celtic way, kind of like this. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's pair these two and see what they, let's see what they, well, let's see what happens, okay? Well, I don't know, we'll move those over there for, for now. Because I do feel a Celtic nature to this, but mostly it's, it's the fae. It's the, 
It's the, well, it's not the Fae, it's the She. <laughs> it has Fae energy, but when I think of the Fae, I think of, uh, I would like to think of the Tuatha De Danann, but, um, I don't necessarily know if that is the right energy for this deck. I think that the she here are more powerful than just fey and just fairies. I think the she are like the royalty kind of of the fey realm. And so this gets you in touch with the primal, but also sovereignty. And there's a very good mixture here with that. So let's see what we get here. Let's do this and then we'll pull one of these to go in the center. So we've got maker three, labor's fruit, okay, then we have warrior queen, of course I got warrior queen. This is like my significator. <laughs> And sometimes I don't like that it is my significator. Like, she's got too much fire. But it's kind of like I made a fire, but I don't want to admit that I made a fire. <laughs> I guess. All right. Ooh, look at that. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I think this is the death card. But no matter, no matter. It's bone. And it's raven, right? It's, with it having sinewy on it, to me that makes me think of the, the carrion birds. So this is the carrion. This is the vulture, right? And so what labor's fruit is, I'm having a, scow I'm having a scavenge for that. I'm having a scavenge for the fruit. So I've put the work in, but the, I'll have to use what I find in a salvage way and in a very roadkill way, a very bone and gritty and, and raw way. But uh, in order to do that, I have to have a strong, a strong backbone and a strong stomach. And the warrior queen is probably the one that you'd have to embody for all that, <laughs> right? I mean, to be on the road with the vultures, you know? Okay. Anyway, ooh, I, I, I'm liking this, you guys. I, I rarely do this in videos because, uh, I don't know, I, I rarely talk about like my deck experiences w using the decks. Usually I just like show you all the cards and stuff and share my epiphanies. Um, okay. <clears throat> now this was sent to me as a gift and it's the little bitty Asherah Tarot, the mini. I believe this is mini because this is tiny. This is this is as tiny as it's tinier than the Greenwood. Uh, but it's so beautiful. It's a Thoth based deck, but it has such color. And the creator of this, Sarah uh, Sarah Wheatley, really went there with the art. She took the Thoth art and really ran with it. But the, and I love that, but the colors and the, the saturation of these cards and the way in which she conveyed the messages of these cards is really, she did a really good job. Like look at this Four of Swords here with the hair flying, that is just so, so good. And then this, this tower, it looks so different than the Thoth Tower, but to me, I kind of feel like the Thoth Tower is down here, looking up. But she chose to come above the tower and look down. And so it's like sometimes she took a different approach and uh, to the angles and things. And then even the, the minor arcana, like the colors, they, they have a good match with the Thoth. But they, they're just so different, but they're so good, you know, so good in what, what they've been, 
what she's been able to convey here, you know? Like, look at judgment. There's no, like, hadith or anything. So good. This empress looks like it has bat wings. I don't know. Something about that that I really, really like. And in some of these, she even put the, the I Ching, which I thought was an interesting connection. I know nothing about the I Ching, so. Lots of bat wings. I like that. I'll have to explore that in this deck. As I said, this is a gift, and I got it recently, so I'll have to really explore. Now, this looks, this reminds me of the star card, but it's the high priestess. Where, didn't we just see the star card? I don't think we did. Let me see if I can pull that out. Wow. Did y'all see this the whole time? And <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> uh, anyway, here's the star. Um, see, I'm, see, in my whole, I'm, my old head, in my own head, I'm thinking I need to find the pink, right? Of the star. <laughs> but these are, there's very, there's some similarities here with the snake. This very dragon energy with both of these. I don't know, I like that. How this is very cosmic, right? And she seems to be pouring the water through this portal here, which, again, is something to explore. Actually, it's mermaid. This is mermaid energy to me. Could be dragon energy. But mermaid fits, I guess. But this looks like this is snake, mermaid, dragon energy as well. I don't know. There's something going on with the magician that I'm like being drawn to. Oh, and then look at this five of cups here. There's starfish. <laughs> so good. Anyway, so I've been kind of playing around with this and seeing what I can find. The chariot has uh, seahorses. Oh. Ah. Ooh, look at this scorpion. Mmm, I don't like that. Love this rainbow. This spiral rainbow. Spiral coming out right here from the core. It's water versus fire. It's all there. It's all there. This girl had a vision. Her death. More scorpions. I love it. And I'm not really a fan of these small decks, but it works. And because this deck is so well done, I feel like I can, you know, get it out and look at several cards at once. You know, that I guess that's the good thing of the mini deck, right? Now, another primal type of a deck that I've been getting out, uh, that, I, that I got out for spring, is the Shining Tribe. And this is by Rachel Pollock. I got this deck out just, just to play with it. I wasn't going to read the book. I wasn't going to like really use it for divination. It was just going to be something that I got out and I played with. I tapped into the primal energy. Tapped into the essence of Rachel Pollock. And to see what I could see. To see what I could discern. And it's really been, I, I've always loved this deck. I have a thing for primitive art. I have a thing for, uh, like, the, like, I guess you could say excavation. I like excavation. I like being able to say, this came from a cave in France. You know, this came from this. And I very much like the... I don't really want to use this word, but there's, I don't, I'm not, I'm, my brain is lacking. So if, if anyone has a better word, tell me, but this is very shamanic in nature. And I keep using the word primal in place of shamanic, but I want to note here that this is very shaman energy. So priestess, shaman, holy man, medicine man energy, this healer uh, and see, I'm going through these terms to get to the right one, and I don't even know if I'll be able to. But this has a very healing, mud-of-the-earth type of an energy to to it. And I appreciate it for that, because it, t it links me all the way back in time to a place that didn't know me. To a place where I didn't exist. And it's 
It's so surreal to think about you not existing in the world at one time. And this deck just, it allows you to be part of the thread and the web. And I love it for its, for its nature. Rachel ended up, Rachel Pollock drew this herself. But it's such a, it's a good deck. I like it. Um, or I like it for what, you know, I like it for what it is. So let's pull a card. Shuffles. I love the shuffle of this deck. So good. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. Nine of trees. Look at this. Oh, I love this. Like this, this very goddess statue in a tree. But then this uh, pyramid back here with the bird goddess. These vessels that are broken. I guess that's what I'm looking at is broken vessels. Water's dripping out everywhere. The water of this river. See, this is the nine of rivers, but the river is here too. And it's very much contained. And the snake is coming up with this goddess. And the Lapras makes me think of the Minoan culture. So that reminds me of that this might be the snake goddess, right? And again, I'm not really reading the book right now, so I don't know what I'm looking at. But I love it. I, 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 love, I love decks like this for my intuition to flow. And not necessarily intuition like, oh, I'm getting a hit. It's more, uh, I'm getting visions that allow my imagination to flourish. Not necessarily that I'm trying to discern something here. So... So I've been loving this. And then the last two oracles are Sorsha's oracle. My little imps. I had to find these little fellas all over the house because I I kind of put stacks because this is this is a big deck, you guys. <laughs> and so I kind of put stacks everywhere, like you know, dressers and nightstands and in the kitchen. And um actually I had to take them out of the kitchen because they were making a mess. And they weren't cleaning up after themselves. So. <laughs> but I love them. Oh my God. I love them. I love them. This is the dreams. If I haven't said. This is the dreams of Pentag Pentagoral Oracle by Sorsha. It was made using a, um, a text. A illustrated text of the dreams of Pentagoral. Very, very surreal creatures here. But I love it. There's, it's so comical, you know? But so real at the same time. And you, because of the nature of the art, you do, you kind of want to laugh out loud, right? Like you laugh out loud. But then at the same time, you're like, but could this be serious? Could this be saying something serious? And, and you find yourself being drawn in and going, hmm, what could that mean? You know, <laughs> instead of, you know, I mean, you could just read it like I, I've read it just being comical, you know, just pairing it with like my Bosch tarot over there and going to town. But sometimes when I pull a card, I'm like, okay, this could be the eight of swords, right? <laughs> like, uh, not that it needs to have an eight of swords energy, but I kind of feel like sometimes when I'm having a laugh with it, it's kind of demanding of me to find the seriousness of it as well, uh, which I kind of find, I, I kind of find interesting. I love it so much. Let's just take these two stacks and, cause you know, like that's a whole deck right there. That's like one deck. <laughs> it's so pretty. I love all these decks. I love all these decks. And a lot of these, like my Greenwood Tarot, I haven't gotten out in a while. 
You know, they've just been in the drawer. Like, I know I didn't use that or the Terror of the Moon Garden last year. So, I don't know. It's been, you know, it's kind of been sitting over in purgatory. So, they kind of, I don't know. It feels very fresh to have them out, I guess you could say. Let's just do this. What do we have here? Chicken farmer. Is that bag on her have grapes on it? And look at these tongues of this shoe. I don't know. What is up with the chickens? Where is she taking the chickens? And they're chicks, not really chickens, they're chicks. What is she doing with the chicks? I love her hat. Oh, I love this little devil cricket. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <clears throat> this makes me hear crickets in my head. Oh my God, just had an epiphany. Okay, sorry. Listen, let's do Marlena's thing again with this. Um, the, oh, my dog is so loud. Let's do the fantasy versus reality thing with this and uh, my oracle because this is very fantasy, right? This is very uh, fanatical. No, fantastical. I guess it could be fanatical too. Let's see. We'll see what we get. Okay, so this card will be our fantasy. Ooh, look, we got a little jester. You know, like a little full card. Uh, as I call him. Now, let's see. What card? No, what deck? Let's use my deck. Uh, my Oracle deck. Where do I put you? Oh, I'll just put it here. I'll just put it here. Uh, I have my Wild Nature, Wild You deck out. Because I was actually going to try that later with the fantasy versus reality thing. And this is my Nature Stock Image Oracle Love it so much. Oh. Okay, so we have the fool. He's talking to a bird. You know. I'm very much hearing, pretty girl, pretty girl. I had a I had a beloved like grandmother figure growing up that had a whole bunch of birds that talked to her. And every time one of them would see me, she would say, uh, not me per se, but people other, you know, like people that all that bird could say was, pretty girl, pretty girl. <laughs> ah. It's just so, it's just, you know, it's a memory, right? Let's see what we got. Ooh, nectar. Oh, but this, this isn't, I don't know. This is making me think that he's trying to eat this bird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Or maybe, see, honeysuckle makes me think of uh, like childhood and getting in touch with the essence of play, running through the woods and, you know, plucking the honeysuckles and eating it, which is very much a huge part of my childhood in the summer and spring. But I guess this makes me think of childhood. This is like, this is like innocence, talking to birds. You don't have to be, you don't have to have childlike innocence to talk to birds. I talk to birds all the time. Uh, maybe this is an innocence. I don't know. It's like reality versus fantasy. Or maybe this is telling me that I think that I'm a fool. In, in, in a lot of ways, you know, a very big, I don't want to call it a shadow, very big part of me doesn't want to come across as unintelligent, you know, and if I come across as unintelligent, then that makes me feel bad, but 
no, it's something I have to work on, you know? So we got Nectar. We got this like weird fool card. Let's pull another one. We got Prophecy. Um, so, no. You know, because I just have it out, because I like, I don't know, I like to read what I wrote to remember what I wrote. I have a, this is, this is an actual copy of the guidebook that I made for Wild Nature Wild You. But for anyone interested in the guidebook, it doesn't come like this, unfortunately. You have to get it in PDF form. But, um, oh, let's see. Let's see what they, let's see what it says for nectar. Okay. Ripe honeysuckles grow wild, begging to be plucked and suckled. Their nectar is so potent, potent, a summer treat for your wild senses. Have you ever wondered what the nectar of the gods meant? Some say it's ambrosia, some say it's honey, some even say wine. People for millennia have placed certain foods and drinks on pedestals, and why shouldn't they? These nectars may have been used in ritual ceremonies and in offerings, but mainly they increase the power that people already carried within themselves. Here, the emphasis is life, is life potency. Quality of life is what you make of it. There are many nectars that may sustain you. In what ways can you improve your quality of life? Is this a nightly glass of wine ritual, a milk and honey bath, a cup of tea in the afternoon? Seize the powers of the saccharin specialties and live your best life. That's what the fool does, doesn't he? He's living his best life. <laughs> oh, Maybe I think I'm living my best life and that's my fantasy, you know? It's the ego, but what I really need to do is make it more simple than that. It needs to be simpler than that. I'm loving this, loving this. All right, now what we're gonna do now is I'm going to share a spread with you guys that I came up with. It's called the Secret Garden Spread. And I'm gonna actually draw it out. So I'm gonna close the video down and I'll see you in just a second because jump cuts are a thing. All right, now I hope this Sharpie works. I'm gonna draw out, I'm gonna draw some stuff for the Secret Garden Spread. Something to get us motivated for spring. Okay, so when I think of the secret garden, not necessarily the movie or the book, but the archetype too. The archetype of the garden, the archetype of the walled garden, and the components. Like, what are the main, I, I tried to think of what the main components of the secret garden were. And so, of course, there's a wall, right? And this wall is probably made of brick or something similar, right? And it's fortress, it, it has a fortress nature, a very protecting boundary, right? nature. Let's color it in because I got my markers out. I'm just doing some little fun stuff here. It's not really the color of brick, is it? But we're going with it. And the wall would be wall would be position number one because that's what we encounter when we first step towards the garden and it's got some it's got a lot of ivy in it you know a lot of ivy around it there's a hidden nature I mean we know that there's a wall here and we know there's a garden inside. Somehow we know that the garden is inside of it, right? And that's kind of, to me, that's, there's, that's very telling, you know? Is that we know that something's hidden inside. 
You know, it's like a dragon egg or a treasure chest that we have to find. It's the same kind of concept, right? It's like treasure hunting. Now, the second component is the door. I'm gonna put a little, put a little keyhole here. And it's a very old wooden door, right? And again, this is something that's hidden here, you know? Something that we have to, we have to look through all the vines to get to it. But the second position is the door, all right? We have to go through the door. But with that being said, we can't go through the door because it's locked, right? But there's a key. So that's the third position, the key. Okay, so now we've gone into the garden. We're seeing, we're encountering all this stuff, all these wisps of stuff, right? Some of it may be wild, some of it may be manicured. We're seeing hedges and bushes and trees and flowers and patches of all kinds of things, right? And again, that's very telling too, how wild the garden is that we imagine. Let's color in some of these plants. Because we're just having some fun here, you know? This is very very calm very spring again there's all kinds of plants that we encounter here all kinds of plant friends and Wildlife. So much color. So much color. Lots of ornamental grasses everywhere. And again, maybe some more ivy, right? But what leads us through the garden is a path and it's probably a winding path okay and again the path could be manicured could be very manicured or doesn't have to be Right? Could be pebbles. Could just be a cut edging through the grass. Right? Uh, let's put some markers up because I don't want to run out of space here. The path is 
what we're walking, you know, through the garden. So that is position number four. Is the path. The path that we're walking. Again, we're encountering the path, but also encountering the plants. So that's position five. Are the plants that we're encountering. Okay. But there has to be some kind of feature, right? Some kind of focal point. Usually there's kind of some kind of focal point in the, in the garden where the path leads, right? So I'm calling this a fountain. The fountain that's in the center of the garden. Okay. Beautiful water feature. And that is the last position. The fountain. Okay. So here's our secret garden in a spread. The wall. Okay. First position here is this is security. Now there is no questions in this spread. This is like concepts that we're going to approach with the cards. So the wall is security. It's protection. It's boundaries, right? It could even be procrastination, right? That we, we know something's inside, but sometimes we might not want to mess with it. We're not going to go there, right? It takes, it takes real bravery. And that's what the door symbolizes. It's a bravery test. This is your bravery test. This is an, an, an acknowledgement that you're finally going to go into the garden is the act of finding the door. And then the key is your power. You're unlocking potential here. This is a liberation. A liberation for what has been locked, locked away. We're unlocking our potential with the key. We've met the wall. We've met with our security. We've protect, we've, we've found the protection. We've we're no longer ignoring procrastination or we're no longer ignoring or procrastinating and we're finally going to be brave and find the door. And when we find the door, we have to unlock our power with the key. So when we finally, we do these things, we open the door, we're met with the path, right? And the path is a path to follow. The obstacles you'll face, there's an impetus here. The, the, the impetus is what we're working with, with the path. Feet to the path. That's what position four is. How are your feet on the path? How are you going to forward? How are you going to move forward? Okay, so this is the path in which you need to follow. When we encounter the plants, the plants are, to me, seasonal magic. Some may be dormancy, some might be dead. Maybe you need to plant new seeds for flowers for next year. Maybe you're reaping the flowers that you've planted last year, right? Whatever the purpose, there's seasonal magic. There's seeds. What's being planted? Is there an inner purpose here, right? What, we're, what are we actively working on? This could even be your needs, right? You're planting and... and uh, looking at your needs in plant form. But then when we, when we get to the center of the garden, when we finally get to the fountain, this is your point of focus. This is your point of interest in the reading. This is the inner sanctum. Okay, so this could be a soul card. 
This is a place where you breathe and you reflect. So what are you, what are you focusing on? What are you reflecting on right now? I love this. So again, security protection, you know, what are we, what are we ignoring? Maybe the door is your bravery test. What are we acknowledging that we need to do? How are we going to unlock our potential to do said thing? And then once we're on that path, what is that path? What are the obstacles we may face? Right? How are we putting our feet to the path? And then how are we using seasonal magic to make that happen? Maybe these are rituals that you need to do, right? Whatever, seeds being planted. And then in the center, this is our point of interest, our point of focus for the whole reading. So there is the secret garden spread. I may take a picture of this and post it somewhere for you to download if you want. But um, you can always just pause the video right now to get to write it out yourself if you, if you want to participate. That'd be great. And let me know if you like it. Okay. All right. Well, that was my spring tea TBR plus a spread plus a little on uh, Marlena. I will leave all the necessary links below. Uh, and Sorsha, because she talked about the Secret Garden recently as well. So I will leave some resources for you in the, in the section below. I hope everyone is taking care of themselves and is having a lovely day and spring. Much love.